Okay, let's go ahead and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Get started. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do you call the roll? Yes, sir. <laughs> Dr. Randalls. She's in Hawaii. Ms. Slade. Here. Dr. Felb. Present. Dr. Flores. Mr. Legrand. Yes. Matias. Yes. Pastor Moody. Present. Mr. Ross. Present. President Baker. Here. Okay. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Support. Everybody agree? Uh, Everybody yes. Disagree? Yes. Okay, thanks. All right, let's move on. <laughs> so first we have celebrations. Thank you, President Baker and members of the board. I'd like to ask Mel Atkins to come forward, please. Good evening, Superintendent Neal. Board President Dr. Baker and members of the board. Today I'm here, I'm very excited about um, the parent, and representing the Parent Engagement Office. And we want to recognize 43 parents who have earned power parent status by, by completing um, a minimum of the following requirements. They completed attendance and achievement course, effective parenting course, navigating the education course, and they attended parent teacher conferences and also reported back on it, on, mm. on the findings of it. Nice. And all this is happening through Parent University. And remember, just a um, brief review Parent University is a community collaborative to help parents become full partners in their child's education. Um, you know, our website is parents.grps.org. But also, one, th one of our pillars we believe in is the power of recognition. We know there's not enough money we can give someone from you know, having their, their children come to us um, six to eight hours out of the day. But we, what we can do is treat people right. We can recognize their efforts and what they do. And this is what this is, this is the basis of, of power parents and why we're here today. I want to introduce um, briefly um, Angela Glassner. She is a, a PAL member um, at Stocking. And she's a power parent, one of, one of the power parents at Stocking, not the only one, but one of the parent, uh, power parents at Stocking. And she um, has a few words she'd like to say today. I would like to thank everybody for giving me this opportunity to talk to you all. Um, I was asked by Jan to give you guys a few um, pointers of what I've been doing. Um, I've taken every single class on the parent university that was supposed to be done. All right. Um, I'd That's also, nice. I'd also like to tell you about a little bit about one of the classes I enjoyed the most was the parent leadership 101 class. It kind of taught a little bit about the learning styles and how our children learn different ways and how we can grasp that to help them to bring it home, to help them with their homework and whatnot. So I went home and I gave my, each one of my kids the test to see if it worked. Teacher. And, yes, and see if it worked. And um, I found out one of my daughters was music. Her interest was music. So now it works out for her because she gets to listen to her music while she's doing her homework. So that was a little perk. Uh -huh. um, I've also learned that the importance of attendance and how it doesn't affect that single year in school and how it just kind of builds. It's like a non-ending you know, continuous for the kids. If they don't use it, they lose it. Mm -hmm. um, and I've just kind of learned and established that with all my other parents and try to teach them how important it is to be a power parent and to encourage and engage our children in learning awesome. and to get better every year. Thank you. Wow, and, and behind us, um, if you're a power parent, um, please stand up so you can be recognized. Wow. Thank you. What you what you notice on Angela is we have um, Parent University hats, and they're going to get certificates out, out in the hallway, and they have lanyards to to recognize their efforts too. Can we shake them? Yep. Yep. Thank you you. want to? Um, and we have enough people. Can you? We're going to start shaking the board members' hands. Right. Just, just go this way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank 
Oh, okay, yeah. Harrison. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I tried to get Ruth to run for the board way back when. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need to... <laughs> I'm always getting in trouble. Wow. <laughs> How can you forget that? That's me. <laughs> That's very nice. Thank you, Jan. Very nice. Yep, very you. nice. Thank you very much. Nice work. Awesome. So, a little Mel. Mel. A little Mel. A little Mel. A little Mel. Right. Before you leave. So, anyway, I just wanted to uh, thank this work. It's great. And uh, great. all the parents are gone. But, um, no, I mean, I really appreciate the diversity of, mm. of family. I mean, it just represents the district well. And it's just amazing. That's you know, great. it's just, I mean, the stuff that she had to say. So, anyway, thanks a lot for your work. No, we appreciate it. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It's great. Yeah. All right, next we have report of student representative of the board. Um, so first of all, I just wanted to talk about how great I thought, first of all, the state of the school speech was. Uh, and one of the recurring themes in that and one of the recurring themes for your entire time here has been transformation. Uh, and so to that end, I'd just like to you know voice my support for the bond proposal that will be nice. uh, showing up this November. It's going to be a key part of the transformation plan. So I would encourage everybody to go out there and vote in favor of it. Um, the second thing I'd like to say is that I was really excited um, the, you know, back a week ago when uh, I watched as a couple of my friends tore down the huge second in the state of Michigan banner at City <laughs> High School and put up first in the state of Michigan, 83rd in the country. Um, so that's an indicator of what our district can do. So I'm excited about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Atkins. You know that, you know, I bet they could use some volunteers on that, you know, in the fall come community service. Yeah, that's, that's right. So you didn't hear that here, but um, you can, I'm sure you can find somebody who can help you out with that. So, um, all right. Uh, public comment. Anyone turn in public comment card or like to give public any. comment for a board agenda item? We'll have a chance later if there's another item you'd like to discuss. All right. Thanks. Um, secretary's report. There is no, uh, nothing to report at this time. You know, I have an item that probably would belong in the secretary's report, if I can say it now, rather than, this is in regards to our board retreat. Mm -hmm. Would it be good? Mm -hmm. This would be a good time. Say it now. So uh, just to give the board some time, and I'm working with Dana, and so we'll get an announcement out, but this, the public is a, it needs to be aware of this too. But mm -hmm. on uh, May 29th, uh, we will have the board retreat. Um, there will be, um, this will be at the KISD, the Cedar Room. Mm -hmm. um, and for those of you, what's is, which building? That's the Educational Services. It's the main building. The main mm -hmm. building. So if, especially if you come off NAP and then come mm -hmm. in, right. the first parking lot, that's the first building. It's less confusing than mm -hmm. coming off the Beltline. Um, so the Cedar Room, very nice. Mm -hmm. We will have a nice lunch. And um, I we would start, um, the, we'll open at 8, be ready to go around 8.30. Um, have lunch, um, expect to be out between two and three, so if you can hold three, but um, hoping to be wrapped up by two. Um, and so if anybody has any questions about that, let me know. Dana will be announced giving the details to everyone, but in terms of the public knowing that will occur. Great. Sorry about not getting that on there. But, um, all right, superintendent's report. Thank you, President Baker and members of the board. I'd like to ask uh, Ron Gorman to come forward, please. Good evening. Good, Good evening. evening. Good evening. Superintendent Weatherall Neal, Dr. Baker, President Dr. Baker, uh, distinguished members of the board. I wish Henry hadn't stolen my fun. <laughs> <laughs> You can't do it as good as he did it either. Gee, and we had our briefing before. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate it coming from Henry because he's there every single day and he knows right. how hard the students, staff members, mm -hmm. administration are working there. So City High uh, was named this week as the number one high school in the state of Michigan, uh, which is a gold medal award. There are 608 school districts in the state of Michigan 
There are 849 high schools in the state of Michigan. So for city to be number one, it is quite an accomplishment. Uh, to put things into even greater perspective, city's 83rd nationally, and there are 29,070 high schools, 70 high schools uh, in the United States. So to be 83rd nationally, it's quite an accomplishment. Absolutely. City has been second for quite some time, and the number one school in the state has been the International Academy in Bloomfield Hills. Mm. So at this time, I'd like to read the, the ratings of the, of the top five schools. City, of course, number one. The International Academy is number two out of Bloomfield Hills. Uh, Grand River Preparatory Academy of Wyoming, Michigan, uh, third. Black River High in Holland, fourth, and Ernest C. Holm High School in Birmingham. So three West Michigan schools that's and awesome. uh, two from the other side of the state. So if, if you're the top in West Michigan, that's saying something. Uh, ten high schools earned gold medals nationally, 68 earned sil silver medals, and 167 earned bronze medals. So many ask, why was City named number one? So I'll, I'll put that into perspective for you. Are students performing better than what's statistically expected on high school standardized tests? So that's step one. Uh, City in 2009, 2010 had a composite ACT score of 24.2. In subsequent years, 24.5, 25. They took a dip in 2012-13 to 23.9. And last year they had a 26.4 highest ACT score in school's history. Monica's here and the new scores are embargoed. But uh, we're going to have some news that doesn't show that we're going backwards relatively soon. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Stay very vague on that. <laughs> extremely so. vague. We're extremely vague. That would be the That's superintendent it. in trouble. That's right. That's right. <laughs> 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 Step two, are disadvantaged students <laughs> outperforming other disadvantaged students in the state? Mm -hmm. So that's number two. And then lastly, uh, college readiness performance, specifically on AP assessments and IB assessments. Mm -hmm. So those are the three criteria by which schools are judged. Uh, from the standardized testing piece, it's really looking closely at mathematics and reading. Um, we firmly believe that uh, the, the jump in their scores, the number one rating, is attributed to uh, the students who attend school there, the staff members, uh, support staff, teachers, the administration led by uh, Mr. Pasco, soon to be Dr. Pasco in his administration, but uh, they have a growth mindset there. Like we have a growth mindset in all of our schools, and I firmly believe the best is yet to come, so right. hooray for city. Mm. Nice. President Baker, I would like to ask uh, all of the executive directors from the academic team to come forward to share information about uh, a Harvard, the Harvard University class that they took. And please introduce yourself for the record, for the public. Will you? Well, let's start with you since we just okay. met Ron. So. Hi, I'm Maida. <laughs> Maida who? Maida. <laughs> and we're, uh, we're, we're taping, Gunnel. so. <laughs> Maida Gunnell. I oversee K-8's middle schools in ELL. Okay. Thank you. Good Rick, evening. Good evening. Good evening. Rick Noel, oversee elementary schools and early childhood. We're happy to be here tonight. Okay. okay. Laura Lamore, overseeing special education for the district. Thank you. And Ron Gorman, I work with high schools and alternative education. And I think I have a really short chair. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll do, I'll do my best. I'll do my best. <laughs> Well, I'm going to kick us off, and um, President Baker, Superintendent Neal, and board, it's our pleasure to be sitting here in front of you as we've recently returned from study at Harvard for the purpose of learning how to conduct <coughs> instructional rounds. As you know, effectively addressing gaps in student achievement in a large urban setting requires a transformation leadership. And we've made some sound improvements in recent years, and we're looking forward to sustaining those improvements across our future. The district administrators, we need to have the training to implement systems change, because before we can ask and empower our principals to make those kinds of substantive changes, we have to know how to support and empower them to do so. So to both front load and sustain this work, Grand Rapids Public Schools has garnered the support of a community partner and our partner in this leadership venture has been Steelcase. We would like to thank Julie Ridnauer, the president of Steelcase Board of Trustees. Uh, the instructional EDs are here tonight to share with you um, 
what occurred for us when we took we took part in the first phase of what we think is going to be a wonderful <laughs> three year um, journey into digging into this student level learning for our transformation. And Ron is going to share with you now a little bit more about what instructional rounds actually are. So we had a, a phenomenal experience in Cambridge, uh, the four of us, and as you can see, all four divisions were represented, uh, elementary, middle, high, and then our students uh, with disabilities uh, well represented there, and I'm glad we went. The instructional rounds process uh, from an elevator speech perspective is really helping schools that have identified a significant problem of practice in their building. Uh, for example, a school that is having a challenge with something specifically relating to instruction. And so the process really has four parts. Uh, our first part in the, in the many schools uh, we observed is the principal of a school as well as his or her staff tell us their problem of practice, tell us about their school. Uh, are there lots of students in poverty in their school? Are they struggling with reading comprehension or mathematics or something comparable to that? So the principal speaks to a large group of individuals, about 30 individuals, um, most of whom are external folks, all of whom were external folks on our trip. And the principal tells us all about the school. After that, once we learn about the problem of practice uh, in the schools, we, teams comprised of three or four individuals, go into classrooms and look for descriptive feedback. Not feedback based on, oh, I think the teacher should do this, or gosh, if, the only, if only the teacher posted his or her objective for the day. We're not doing that. So the two schools uh, that I visited were focusing on student talk. Uh, lots of uh, low-level questions were identified in the schools we visited. The principal wanted to see more higher-level questions and more dialogue amongst the students. So that was their problem of practice. So when our team went into classrooms, we were looking through that lens at their problem of practice. We took notes, uh, just two-column notes. We came back to the main group uh, after that, after visiting three classrooms, and we took all of the themes uh, that we saw, all of the descriptive notes, and we put them on a sticky board. And it's amazing when you're all looking through the same lens at the problem of practice, how similar each sticky note is from all around the group. And these were individuals from Australia, uh, California, Michigan, et cetera. There were folks who went from, came from many miles to see this training. So then after uh, you write the descriptive notes, uh, there is then a, a period of time where you debrief but you want to stay really low on the level of inference. You don't want to jump to, if the school would only do this, they would be successful. You want to start out with, we all saw this in the school, and then uh, there's a period of time where the teachers are invited in to do a gallery walk, to walk all around the room, to look at these descriptive notes. And uh, I believe it provides lots of affirmation for the teachers because they're seeing the same things as they walk around. They're not seeing um, varied approaches to, to what we're putting on there. And then after there's a debrief with the school staff, at that time and at that time only, that's when we determine next steps. So from a central office district perspective, you know, where should the school go from here? And what resources and supports will get the school to the next level? So it starts, what do you see? Ensuring that we've reached consensus as a room, that we're all seeing the same things. Uh, there's a debriefing when the staff members are there and then focusing on the next level of work. That was a long elevator speech, and I'm glad you stuck with <laughs> me. But uh, it was a very, very powerful experience, one of the most powerful professional developments that I've had in my 18 years in the school district. That's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And Ron asked me if I would today give an aha moment. And that was a big elevator, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the first aha moment really came for us <laughs> when we were to board the bus the first day at 6.30 a.m. And that romantic trip to Boston suddenly turned on, took a whole different meaning because it, we, didn't, we saw Boston practically from an airplane, and that's about it. Um, but in terms of aha moments, the work that we've really been engaged in our district has been really in terms of compliance, going into buildings, going into classrooms, you know, with a theoretic checklist of checking off, are, are our initiatives happening? Are teachers doing what they said they would do? And really looking primarily at teacher practice. And what we came out of this experience really discovering uh, is that really turning the lens away from teacher, away from teaching, and instead really looking at the learning that's taking place or isn't taking place in the classroom. 
classroom. And that seems like a subtle shift, but it really is an enormous shift in terms of really changing the perspective. And the teacher really became secondary. We didn't look very much at what the teacher was doing. We were engaged in looking at what the students were doing, what activities they were engaged in, what learning was taking place, what their understanding of the task was related to the learning that was taking place. So it was really shifting our view, which I think has some really substantial uh, possible, or positive possibility for us as a system to shift that look. And Ron asked me to share with you all a takeaway. And my takeaway was, first of all, it was the most powerful, intense professional development that I have had in all my years in education. Um, we were literally working. <laughs> <laughs> like you text me a few times. <laughs> but it was, I grew so much. Um, but also, the power for me was the power of that focused collaboration that I saw happening at those two schools that we went to and spent time with was amazing. How that collaboration could actually begin to turn a school around and focus, focus in on the, their prob problem of practice, which is directly correlated to the school improvement efforts. So I cannot say enough about the training and the potential that Instructional Rounds has for us. And we would love questions if you have any. Well, I have a comment, but actually, did others have questions or comments for us? Yeah, Pastor Moody. Yeah, how many schools did you say you attended? We were broken up in different, we didn't go together all the time. So Rick and I were, were at a school, but we were in separate groups. And then Ron was at another building the first day. And then the four of us went to a second building on the second day of training. Actually, it was the third day of training. They intentionally break us up. Mm -hmm. There were some groups that had like 10 or 12 individuals who were there. It was their second or third time going through. And what they intentionally do as a, as a learning tool is they break us up because they figure that we know each other well and rely on each other's strengths. And they really wanted to individualize our conceptual learning of what it was that we were going to be getting. Um, interestingly enough, as a, as a flag-waving GRPS is <laughs> over the moon amazing, as we looked around the room on some of the days when we would come back together and do our analysis, we were all in four different groups, and yet the four of us were standing and leading the analysis part of, like, all over the rooms. So we're going, oh, look at that. That's good. I, I, I mean, Rick, you talked about this shift from, from looking at teaching to learning, and I think that as a teacher, I think that that's really empowering because it, it creates partnership with teachers on the learning outcome instead of feeling uh, alone and, and the responsibility for that outcome. And so, I mean, I just imagining the context of learning and all that goes into the child learning versus my responsibility as a teacher to see that that kid learns. And so it really creates partnership. And so I guess away my allegiances, but uh, I appreciate your saying that. Well, I, think I, it's think a, I think it's a big shift, even though it might seem subtle, it's a big shift. I think too, the, the, the proof was really in what we saw taking place in some of those classrooms where that shift had taken place already and you could see students connected and engaged in ways that were remarkable I mean we were in a kindergarten classroom and, and we, we went we walked out with our, our mouths kind of hanging open in terms of what those kindergartners were involved in and what was fascinating is the principal and I think this speaks to the level of work and intensity of the work the principal was unhappy that they weren't doing more than what we saw mm. so it, it is really it, it is a, a significant shift but a good one you are absolutely correct Oh, uh, Will, do you think that that will impact how we view teaching uh, as opposed to what is that teacher doing to look at the kids and how they're performing? I mean, I, I could see some shift in how you look at teaching and, and how teachers are measured and, and, and helped and coached. This was I think that's an important piece. This is not an evaluative right. process. That. It's a process that. to more towards professional 
learning I understand and reflection. That. So I think, yes, it, it is more about what's actually and learning and what actually are, what are actually, what are students actually doing? What is the task at hand? And is it related to the standard and how rigorous is the task? So during the debrief, one of the questions that I wrote it down was, what should students be able to do based on the instruction, based on the instruction that took place? So that was a question that we asked. Based on what you saw, what should students be able to do? So in some rooms that was, you know, ask, um, they, they should be able to answer low to mid-range Bloom's taxonomy questions. In others, it was, gosh, these are higher level questions that the students should be able to answer as a result of the instruction they received. So it's really looking through it from a from student's <laughs> lens, more so than what's that, what is a teacher doing every second of I the agree. observation. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you, were you able to engage in parents and, and how that process is uh, in, in terms of the schools or the schools that you visited, how did you see that aspect, how they saw student learning and then parent engagement or that kind of partnership? We, parents were not involved in that process, but we heard that there was parent engagement in both schools that I went to within varying degrees. Mm. My schools as well. One of my schools uh, seemed to have lots of parental involvement from what we heard from the principal in, in her introduction. Another one seemed that there wasn't as much parental involvement. So I saw a mix of both. Sounds to me like it was very much a, an instructional mm -hmm. conference, if you what will, or That's right. exercise that was really focusing on that as opposed to That's right. you know, parents or other staff or whatever. It's really an instruction, which I think mm -hmm. to be commended to research that because it really is about what's happening in that mm -hmm. classroom. And really having fresh eyes come in. You know, we do learning walks now, and it's, it's mm -hmm. building staff along with some of us, but those are folks that are deeply embedded in the work. But when you have somebody from the outside coming in, really focusing in on the practice in the building, you get a different view. Mm -hmm. They're not littered with all of the preconceived things that we have in our heads. So if we have a great deal of learning to do great. as we continue. Um, we are now considered um, a part of the GRPS network for instructional rounds and look forward to others joining our network. There is There are two existing networks in the state of Michigan, one immediate neighbor and that is the Ottawa ISD. They have a superintendent level network and we are a local district network. And then Covert, is yes. that Covert Public Schools is another district that um, attended. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking forward to establishing partnerships and, and next steps and what are the boosters and barriers that they ran into that we don't want to. So what can we learn from them as existing entities so that we can continue our Michigan network sustaining the kind of learning that we had while we continue to go forward with GRPS? I have one last question. It sounds like you guys have a lot of learning and a lot of fun learning at the same time and meeting different people. The question I want to ask is this, for what you have learned and what you were engaged in, what specifically could you bring back to this district that could happen immediately? Immediately. Well, we, we found out when we were at Harvard that the best way is learn by doing. So we need to be able to learn by doing practice and get others engaged in the work and that's why I think part of the reason why we're here tonight sharing the information so that we can move on and get more people trained and share the work learn by doing Good response. it's not at the beginning we're not going to be perfect <coughs> but we're sure going to learn mm -hmm. and we're going to make improvements um. So um, um, when you mentioned Covert and Ottawa ISD, uh, does this, these um, instructional rounds, we sort of exchange personnel? So some of you maybe would go there and they would come here? Because you yeah. mentioned the 30 folks were outside mm -hmm. folks. I'm assuming obviously all educators though. Um, and they were just outside of the particular district that you visited. Well, I think really at this point, we don't know the answer to that question because really what those two uh, sister networks or sister schools can provide for us is additional training and learning for us. 
No, I guess my question, though, uh, going back to your Harvard visit first, then, when you mentioned the 30 folks that participated in right. these rounds, I'm assuming those 30 folks um, were just, when you, you, I think you said outside folks, just mean that they're outside the particular district in which the rounds were conducted. So, theoretically, then, at GRPS, uh, those rounds will be conducted by po possibly folks from other districts. I think is initially, that? but part of my takeaway from being there is also that the school district also engages in networks. For example, there might be a network for the Ottawa Hills, an Ottawa Hills network, a feeder pattern. Some, so mm. it doesn't have okay. to be outside people. That could be part of a network, but okay. it could be an internal networks by feeder patterns. Where Ottawa Hills network, when when they're trained, they go and visit another network within the district. Okay, thank you. So it, it's a protocol you. yeah. that you can use differently. All right, thank you. If I can just ask this one more comment. Mm -hmm. I think what's exciting for me and, I, and for the public is the fact that um, it, it sounds like we're reaching another level. You know, in our mm -hmm. effort to make this district in terms of, of uh, graduating and, and where parents want to know that our kids are going to learn and they're going to be ready for, you know, if it's from elementary to the next grade or from elementary to middle school or high school that, in fact, um, what, what you're doing is preparing and continuing to, to go to the next level or go to, to that next place that's really going to continue to produce uh, the kinds of students that that are ready for whatever level that, that they're going to go to, grade ready, you know, all those things that we, that for me as a parent, I would want for my kid, that you're saying we want to give that to our 17,000 plus, you know, students. And, and to also reach more than one, you know, school that's a state school that, that, that's the best. Maybe it's two or three of us, you know, of our schools that will continue to do that. So that's, that's exciting for me to see that at a cabinet level, it's going to continue to uh, reach to to those students and and certainly to those principals and and those staff that uh, that they can be encouraged to continue uh, that role. So that's really exciting to hear. Very exciting. And I like what you say too about the next level because we, all four of us talked about this as we looked and Laura mentioned it as we looked around the room at the other districts from really all across the the globe. Mm -hmm. Truthfully, mm. from many, many miles away, some of those groups were really struggling with what we saw as very fundamental skills, if you will, uh, tracking what you see, your observations in a classroom, providing feedback. They were struggling with a lot of the parts and pieces that we were able, we've already been doing. Mm -hmm. So it really is like the taking it to the next level in a lot of ways, because while they were struggling, we had those skills already in our, and I think sometimes you get so deep in the work, you don't really realize that, and so I think that provides some good perspective that we really are, in a lot of ways, really ahead of the game. Now it's, we can take what we now know, and let's go to the next level with it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have several action items. Um, and the first action item does reflect that we actually went back and read those memos that were sent to us, me, and uh, we did decide about um, the Kent ISD. So can I get a um, someone to please? Um, what is the motion you're looking I'm for? I'm sorry, the support for the Kent ISD school board election. So moved? Support. Cool. Any discussion on this? This this came up at the last meeting, and we decided that Mo can represent us in this in this election. We'll do a, a quick run out there and run back. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Oh, you had to do that. Is it? When is that vote? June one. <coughs> It'll be a tight move, but okay. but it's not that. Yeah. Okay. Is that just Take a one a day? Half hour break for me to go. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you to Ms. Slade for representing. Yeah. Okay. Can Very we well. get a please to do vote it. on that? Thanks, Mo. I thought you were gonna. Do a, a, an all vote, all agreement, all against no, an action that, item. We that, need to yeah. do it individually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Randall not here. Miss um, Slade. Yes. Dr. Felb. Yes. Uh, Dr. Flowers not here. Mr. Legrand. Yes. Uh, Matthias. Yes. Pastor Moody. Yes. Mr. Ross. Yes. Uh, President Baker. Yes. Okay. So moved. All right. Can I get a motion for the warm, safe, and dry construction bidding? So moved. Support. 
Any discussion on that one? Yeah. Um, can I hear? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can come forward. Sorry, I'm pulling this up on my little micro computer here. Um, there was a reference in there to uh, to the um, supervising uh, external bidder. Pardon me, the external contract. We want to have supervising bids, correct? Well, this request is for four single bids. Ah, right, right, right. Okay. Uh, and the issue is, we typically do not accept a single bid. They, these are critical to projects that we have, and it's, we wanted the action first. Uh, it's in the purchase agenda. It affects the Congress restroom project, the Fountain restroom project, and the Mulek roof project. Uh, Triangle did extensive work in addressing trying to get bidders, but in these cases, the bidding climate is such that we only got a single bid. We did not open them publicly. We opened them privately, so the numbers weren't put out. We did have to do post-bid interviews to validate that they were reasonable and acceptable numbers, and only then did we feel comfortable bringing forward for your action and receipt. Okay, and this, based on your experience, those numbers look reasonable? They are, and th the critical issue is this was a second, we actually did a second bid opening, or bid advertisement and opening, trying to get uh, multiple bidders, and uh, certain timing, especially, it's kind of amazing to me, um, floor tile is a six to eight week delivery and it's not ordered till a contract's in hand. So we're already pushing the end of July, which is very tight. So just to let you know what happens if it's not accepted, we will just recommend deferring these to next year. Yeah, that's the only question I had on that. Okay. So um, just uh, for clarity, uh, you mentioned uh, private bidding was put out there. We didn't solicit public bidding. And yeah, yes, the reason pretty much is time sensitivity for that, or oh, maybe did, I missed it. We did do this publicly. Okay. We just didn't read those four mm. single bids publicly. Okay, okay. For, for To protect them, the bidders, if uh, for any reason we weren't choosing them, we don't want that number out on the street. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Lay. Call the roll. Okay, Dr. Randall not here. Ms. Slade? Yes. Dr. Feld? Yes. Dr. Flowers not here. Mr. Legrand? Yes. Matias? Yes. Pastor Moody? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. President Baker? Yes. Okay, all passed. Okay, can I get a motion for the purchasing agenda? So moved. moved. Support? Any discussion of the purchasing agenda? Yeah, I had, a, I had a couple questions on that too. I don't know if anyone else wants to go first. But, um, Madam Superintendent, I don't know if you can tell us who's in charge of the um, IT. Were there a number of IT contracts in there or IT implicated things? Larry Johnson. You can come on. And Larry Johnson is actually in charge of the IT department, Mr. LeGrand. <clears throat> and Cheryl, if you can just introduce yourself for the record. Okay. I'm Cheryl Holly, Director of Purchasing and Supply. Uh, introduce yourself. Good evening, <laughs> Larry Johnson. Good to meet you. Uh, Mr. Legrand, you have a question? Yeah, uh, specifically, uh, we've got a number of things in here which implicate IT, a uh, number of things in the purchasing agenda. We've got a lot of um, computer licensing, some computer purchasing, a lot of uh, internet purchasing from various different vendors. I just wanted, I'd like it if you could for the record and for the public just speak a little bit to the review process here. How often do you review these? I mean, are these, uh, in other words, I want to make sure that there's, if you could just speak to the due diligence about how you arrive mm -hmm. at vendors here. Okay. Um, these are all renewals, so from year to year. Um, Craig does sit down um, every year and um, reviews our current contract to see if we can do any better. Uh, he did, if there's any specific ones, he wasn't here, he did go over them with me. So if there's specific ones you want me to answer to, he did. Uh, give me answers on each one of them. Sure, well, I mean, when you say they're, they're all renewals, I guess that's the heart of the question is, what's, what, at what point do you do, say, an RFP? I mean, mm -hmm. I know, for example, we've got 
AT&T supplying wireless internet. Well, we also have uh, Verizon on there doing wireless work. Um, and rolling contracts from year to year can or cannot be the appropriate uh, thing to do in terms of. We did do an RFP two months ago, mm -hmm. I believe, um, on one of the big ones. The uh, I think it was a landline one. Um, but for the most part, because the infrastructure is already there to do an RFP, then we have to switch all the supporting mm -hmm. devices. So we kind of move forward with what we already have because most of these things already support devices that we have. So we would have to start from scratch and do it all over again. Okay. Um, at some point, maybe I'd like, I think it'd be appropriate to have the board have some kind of global presentation on, on IT infrastructure in general. I mean, this is something that just speaking to, you know, my past experience on city commission, it's something we got really, really behind on um, in the city of Grand Rapids about five or six years ago. And it's the kind of thing that I think the board appropriately has to do a comprehensive look at and say, well, look, globally, we're spending this much money. Uh, what's the what's the lifetime expectations of these of these projects? Where, to, particularly if we're if we're having a bond proposal mm -hmm. coming up, um, I sure. think this would be Makes a really sense. good opportunity for us to to take a global visit of this. So I'm not I'm not suggesting we derail anything that's on mm -hmm. the purchasing agenda now, but I think it's it's good it'd be a good thing for us to to dig into mm -hmm. in the future. So I have a question. Um, this is more of a procedural, um, but was was this purchasing agenda discussed in the finance committee meeting? We, no, act we didn't have finance. Right. We skipped the finance. That's one of the reasons why I'm asking questions now. We okay. No, I wanted to because I, I was getting the impression that, okay, we didn't have a finance committee because yeah, these Craig are questions that was usually Yeah, Craig this morning for finance oh. and then it got canceled. So he would have had all Okay. I'm sorry. Right. So right. I want to make sure that we get no, I appreciate full no, public definitely vetting is, of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. That makes sense. So, absolutely. And, and the only reason that we didn't hold this until the next day is because um, we want to continue on into July 1 when these will, are all set to expire. And, and when we agreed that the Finance Committee might not meet, we agreed that we could we could Correct. discuss this now. So I'm Absolutely. not suggesting yeah. okay. there was, I'm not no, suggesting no, yeah. we didn't need to, that it was a problem to bring it to the board. No, I always think it's absolutely mm -hmm. necessary if we don't have a Finance Committee that we discuss it here. That's why I asked. Um, and secondly, I think that, you know, Teresa and I can talk about when, a, uh, maybe perhaps a work session on, uh, you know, exploring IT sometime mm -hmm. this summer. Um, so that would be, that would be real good. All right. Uh, any other questions or discussion? No. That's good questions. Um. Okay. Um, Dr. Randalls is not here. Ms. Slade? Yes. Dr. Feld? Yes. Dr. Flores not here. Mr. Legrand? Yes. Matias? Yes. Pastor Moody? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. President Baker? Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, can I get a motion for the United Way donation? So moved. Support. And this looks like might be another one that would typically have been discussed in finance. So mm -hmm. anybody, does everybody here know what a Gaga court no, is? No, I don't. I was going <laughs> to ask. So I don't know what a Gaga court is. Explain what Gaga courts are. So you know our, what sounds fun, thing. but what's a Gaga court? Yes, and our, and our support of Mature was a little Delphic on that. It just, <laughs> they, they exist, I assume. It is. Thing. It, is it, has, like, it has replaced oh. tetherball as the cause of, of playground fights. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> you, you all look at me. Like, I'm the old person that wouldn't know what Gaga Court is. Well, you're right. Help. Uh, Gaga Court is uh, it's kind of a form of dodgeball. It's played in an elongated octagonal enclosure, about, I don't know, 15 feet long, 10 feet wide. Mm. Um, for, there's a little variation for younger kids. There's an opening so they can get in and out when they're it or it or whatever. The, the, the bigger kids, it's more like hockey. They go over the board, in and out. Uh, but it's a very popular uh, game with young children now. We have them at six to eight schools. And this donation is to give 18 courts that will place around the district um, our grounds crew will oversee the volunteer installation and make sure everything's set before they're done. A lot of Maybe we should visit. Uh, we'll visit uh, the guy if guy if you want to visit one, there's the one. Um, the, um, the first one that comes to mind is that fountain. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, check. Uh, check. Might want to guy. teach some of the adults how to play the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're not playing yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> At least I wasn't the only one that didn't know what a guy got. Thank you, Ken. Trying to keep up with you, kids. Any, <laughs> any other questions about Gaga? Okay. No. 
Uh, call the roll. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Randall's not here. Ms. Slade? Yes. Dr. Felb? Yes. Dr. Flores, not here. Mr. Legrand? Yes. Matias? Yes. Pastor Moody? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. President Baker? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, can I get a motion for the consent agenda? So moved. Support. Any uh, discussion? Call no the roll, please. Okay. Dr. Randall's not here. Mr. Slade? Yes. <laughs> Miss Slade, I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Miss. <laughs> Dr. Phelps? Yes. Dr. Flores? Uh, Mr. Legrand? Yes. Matias, yes. Pastor Moody? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. President Baker? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Um, we have no discussion items. Um, next is public comment, um, agenda or non-agenda items. Any public comment? Anybody? Leave a card? No. All, All right. right. Superintendent's comments. Well, I'd like to just thank the parents for coming out this evening. I thought that was a really nice celebration. <clears throat> Gone, but that's it. All right, let me, uh, Henry, you want to add anything? Um, I, I just, yeah, thank you to the parents. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I just agree with that. And, and I guess that's all I got <laughs> yeah, for that's you. Right. Hey. Uh, <laughs> sorry about putting you on the spot there. Dr. Paul? Yes, I, um, <clears throat> Saturday was a great event. I want to thank the superintendent again and the president of the board for mm -hmm. both of you guys for just rocking it. And I want to thank everybody who put it together. And I don't know everybody. I know Dana was involved and John Hemholt and Kaylee. And I want to thank the man behind the curtain back That's there. That's right. <laughs> Noah DeSmit, he put that video together. And that was awesome. Was awesome. Thank you, Noah. <laughs> Mr. Ross? Um, I guess I really just, um, you know, no offense to uh, Mr. Gorman and all the other folks who bring celebrations to the table, but that parents piece probably was, um, for me, I guess the most special because yeah. I think that's really been the, a missing piece to so many different things for so long. So to see that momentum growing and, um, you know, that really is just, uh, you know, kudos to Architects of Perry University mm -hmm. and rallying those troops like that for sure. Um, also, I guess, though, um, I do want to also get some kudos to the folks who went to the Harvard visit. Honestly, uh, the probably the dozen times I've seen each of you at the table, I think that's probably the, um, I don't want to say the most sincere. That may come across. Funny, but, <laughs> but I think that really was really the most um, deeply moving that you guys may have spoke to about some of the work that, you, that, that you've done. I really sensed a, a real bit of optimism if you would and a real bit of sort of kind of a, a joint aha moment like ah maybe that's what we've been missing so to speak um you know and i think um district wide i think if we are able to move down that road i think it really uh do a whole lot with sort of removing some of that underlying administrative teacher sort of adversarial sort of air that's sometimes there um, because again the focus is on what we all really want the folks to be on and that's learning um, so I think that really is a potentially a, a invaluable step if uh, if we can really you know move in that direction so just thank you guys for doing that and bringing it back to us I just want to um, really thank um, you know the teachers and the parents we're we're at the, the end of the year and our students really are ready for the end of the year. Um, I have one that's going to graduate and he's ready. And, and I know that a lot of parents probably feel the same way that, that they're at that po point where, uh, wow, if I can just get my child to this place <laughs> and, and, and finish, then we, we would have made it. And so just the hard work that goes into all of that and, and helping our, our children kind of reach their dreams at next place. So just all the hard work that you all put in, really appreciate, uh, really appreciate that. So thank you. Ms. Lee? No comment. Pastor Moody? I just want to, you know, thank the group for going to Harvard. And that the report that you brought back, for me, it was, it, I did a what my colleague, Mr. Ross said, it's exciting to see that you're learning 
in different arenas, but at the same time, you're bringing something to the table as well. And that uh, it says a lot about Grand Rapids Public Schools when our administration has the ability and the capabilities of going into new areas out of state and also bringing your skills to those individuals as well. So I do believe that we are on the brink of being ahead of the game and that someday they'll come here looking for something from us to be give back to them as well in other areas. So thank you. Thank you for your work. And I do want to ditto Parent University for what they've done. But I also want to uh, say that this board that I've been sitting on uh, has, has helped me understand that there is a wonderful feeling when you're in the presence of people who want to see some changes and see some good things happen. And uh, so I think Grand Rapids Public School System is on its way as a team and as a unit. So once again, thank you. Well, I echo everyone else's sentiments. It's certainly a nice time to be on the board, and uh, Dr. Baker, it was nice of you to point that out, to burst that myth that we had picked on for being, <laughs> being school board members. Uh, you know, I think in, in it's a it's an easy thing to, to pretend, because by and large, people don't like politicians in the abstract, and people, I think, often, uh, and, and nobody likes to be, nobody likes people who are managing decline. Um, and it's an amazing thing that I wouldn't have bet money on uh, not too many years ago that we would actually be in a system which is stable and which is clearly poised for growth. I mean, that's just, it's amazing. And it's to the point of, I mean, bizarre. Um, I just, you know, who would have thought it? Who would have thought that? And, and, and it's not just us, of course. It's a conflation of a, of, of a number of wonderful things. I mean, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have thought 20 years ago that cities would ever be cool. Mm -hmm. uh, people finally figured out that cities are actually good things to live in. Uh, I wouldn't have thought we would have had the radical drop in crime rates that we've had in the last 20 years across the country. And you know, all of those things have come together. But so we can't take credit for all of it. But boy, it sure is nice to be able to be a part of an operation that you think, this is great. This is really going well. Um, we are firing on all cylinders, and all of the and you know to see to, to be able to look forward with excitement instead of looking forward with dread mm -hmm. is just a sea change. Instead of thinking, what are we going to have to shut down next year? How are we going to do it? How are we going to do with fewer resources? To think, what's what cool things are we going to do next? Uh, it's an amazing place to be. It really is. Thanks. Wow. Um. Yeah, I want to. I want to again thank everybody involved at Parent University. I think, you know, we've all heard that attendance. Uh, I mean, just as one example, that attendance explanation. But to hear a parent tell us what that is, and then to tell, and to then to know that she's telling other parents, and then that sphere of influence is far greater than any PowerPoint presentation right. by mail, even though we all appreciate them. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, but you know, I was going to say also this team. It's you know, I mean, I, I was going to say this, but actually listening to people talk, it is um, pretty amazing team. And I, I think that we all say that knowing that there's a lot of work to do, and that there's people struggling to try to do right. But I think that it's it's pretty nice to be a part of this. And Saturday was a great celebration, uh, and I know I enjoy uh, and feel very fortunate that I'm a part of this team. So, with that, we'll adjourn. Yeah.